This is an important question for the physiology slash hematology component for step one. They ask a similar type of question on the newer NVMEs. Okay, so you should be aware of this concept. If this is the first time you're stopping by my channel, I really appreciate it. Why don't you hit that subscribe button and even the bell if you want to get all of my annoying notifications. But yet again, there's some value here. So why don't we just get into the question? So we've got a researcher conducting a study on the knockout rabbit, and there's a deficiency of carbonic anhydrase within the RBC. And the question's just asking about uh, what we're going to see for three extremely nebulous variables here, okay? If you have no background on this topic, you're like, what the fuck, okay? But relax, we're just going to talk about chloride shift real quick, and I'll make this real simple, okay? Nothing overly extravagant or superfluous. So at the tissues, we're obviously producing carbon dioxide, right? So the tissue gives off carbon dioxide into the venous blood. That CO2 is going to diffuse into the RBC. So now we have CO2 inside of the RBC, and it's going to combine with water via carbonic anhydrase or deficient enzyme here. This CO2 combines with water to make carbonic acid, H2CO3, and that's going to equilibrate into bicarb and a proton. This is all inside the RBC, okay? So now that we have the bicarb and the proton inside of the RBC, that proton is going to hop onto the deoxygenated hemoglobin. That is an important high yield point in and of itself, although it sounds incredibly nitpicky and low yield, I know, but USMLE asks it. They will say that they will ask uh, which of the following buffers the pH of the blood. And the answer is deoxygenated hemoglobin because the protons that are produced that, that are ultimately derived from the CO2 coming from tissues, those protons within the RBC are hopping onto the deoxygenated hemoglobin. So when we have pH 7.35 to 7.45 of our blood normally, it's buffered within that range because of the deoxygenated hemoglobin. That's a high yield point in and of itself. Now back to our fucking question. So the protons are hopping onto the deoxygenated hemoglobin. We have that bicarb now within the RBC. That's going to move out of the RBC into the plasma, and then to balance charge, chloride moves into the RBC. This is called the chloride shift. This happens at the tissues, okay? And then when you get to the when when you get to the lungs, the opposite occurs. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole discussion of the lungs. You can just say, well, what we're talking about right now, it's just the opposite. So why don't we relate this to the question now? We have a deficiency of carbonic anhydrase. That means we will not be making carbonic acid within the RBC. We will not be making HCO3 minus and H plus in the RBC. So ultimately, we're not going to have bicarb moving out and chloride moving in. So looking at our answers, we have an up arrow in the venous blood because it's not moving into the RBC. We are going to have decreased bicarbonate in the venous blood because it's not being synthesized, so it's not going to move out of the RBC into the venous blood. And then we're going to have decreased protons, fewer protons on the deoxygenated hemoglobin uh, because we simply aren't getting the production of carbonic anhydrase to begin with. Now, I mentioned the point about the buffering of protons with deoxygenated hemoglobin. It should also be noted, this is equally fucking high yield, that that CO2 coming from tissues is ultimately resulting in bicarb in the venous blood. US simply wants you to know that most CO2 in the blood is carried as bicarbonate within the plasma, not the RBC. Now, sometimes students will remember, okay, like most CO2 is uh, carrying the blood as bicarb, but the US simile will list bicarb in plasma and then bicarb in RBC. For some reason, students tend to choose bicarb in RBC. I think it's because it sounds a little bit weird. So students think that that's like the juicy answer. Okay. But most CO2 in the blood is not dissolved just as PCO2. Most CO2 is in the form of bicarb carried in the plasma uh, because of our chloride shift that we just discussed, okay? This can be a 19 minute clip. As I said, it's not to be superfluous. You know the deal, I'm gonna make more content. So if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.